Hello, amazing hackers. Hope you're all doing well today. So we'll have a look at some practical demonstrations from Zap as well, of course, because we can talk about theory all day long, but I haven't built Hexpert just to look pretty. So let's hack it, shall we? So first of all, we're going to start with the automated scan. Of course, click automated scan as usual. Then you can enter your URL through a tag. That's pretty obvious. Then we can enter, for example, hexpert.com, hexpert com feel free to enter that as well by the way and you can use the traditional spider and the ajax spider with firefox headless you can start your attacks and as we do that we can see as well if we go look at analysis we can see the scan policy manager and in here we can basically modify how deep our scans are going to be so you can make changes to that if you'd like you can scan more deeply, you can change the strength, you can change the uh, threshold. Feel free to play around with this a little bit. I'm going to let my scan run for a moment and then I'm going to find some items in the site here, of course, which I can then add to my context as well. Or as you guys might know, my context is also known as my uh, my scope from burp suite oh my god i almost forgot it myself but if we white right click a url we can include it in context and we can create a new context and we'll call this context authentication context why you'll see that later so let's keep with this for now and we'll make some changes to this later as well for now, this is all good. Everything is in scope, so that is perfect. Had I been in attack mode, that would have been automatically attacked as well, of course, which it has now, of course, already been doing. So that's a little bit of the automatic attack for you. Feel free to, again, repeat that on hexpert.com as we move on to the next section. All right, so let's do some directory content discovery, shall we? So we know Hexpert is in context right now. I can right click it and I can attack it and then I can do a forced browse site. So what this is going to do is it's going to do content discovery. I can select one of the lists that I have in here in the directory list 2.3 lowercase medium. You can try to make some changes there if it, if it is uh, sensitive, which uh, if you use the uh, upper or lower cases or not and how long of course because as you can see of course if you use the medium list it's going to take a lot longer than if you use the small list you can start that and you can do the same on hexpert.com and you can see what directories you can find that you weren't able to find with just crawling good luck my friends see you later Besides just directory brute forcing, we can also fuzz the normal fuzzing then, of course. And this is what's known as the intruder in verb suite. So what we can do here, if we have a specific item that we want to highlight as a parameter, we can literally highlight it, add a new fuzz location, and we'll do that as well, because we do have some labs available to us. While we're at the topic, let's do some manual exploration of the slash labs directory you can open up other directories if you'd like as well of course but right now we're going to look at the burp suite labs i know this is the burp suite labs in the zap course it doesn't get more meta than this but we do have intruder labs in here and we'll look at the first one because i think this is of course the most interesting one to get started with as you can see we'll open up the labs directory in here as well and then we'll open up the burp intruder and we have 001.php. Now let's make a request, request, shall we? So we have a password now, an empty password. We can try this one. It is the incorrect password. And we have a password list right here. What we're going to do is we're going to start the fuzzer from the request that we are doing. And since it's a get request, the password parameter is in here, which we're going to mark and we're going to add that as a fuzz location. We don't have a list of payloads yet, so we're going to add them. As you can see, we can just copy and paste that list. 
and we can also save that for later by the way we can add multiple lists of payloads as well but let's start with one to begin with and then you can start your fuzzer now just looking at this we can see that everything returns a 200 okay but we do have some passwords in here which return as you can see instead of 630 bytes they return 639 bytes so you should look at the response body the status code maybe even the rtt which is the time i think the first byte no that's not it i don't remember 100 percent but um it might all be a bit different and you might have to look at it you might have to spot out the ones that are outliers as we can see right here we have password with all capitals so password and indeed we do have the correct password so that's our first fuzzing list uh, fuzzing attack that we can try but we have more of course 02.php which is a number between 0 and 100 so we'll try our first number just to get some data in here and then we'll start our fuzzer again and we have our number right here which we're going to add as well and we don't have that yet so we'll add another um, another where is it file numbers there we go from 1 to 100 with an increment of 1 so that's what our list is going to look like we can save that again or just add this parameter list start our fuzzing and again we'll have to look a little bit at what's happening here we have our payloads which some might if you can see the response body 247 on most of them there we go except this one 54 which has a response uh, a size for the response body of 265 characters uh, bytes so we'll try that number 45 there we go good job correct password so as you can see we can do some fuzzing with the burp suite uh, with zap as well i keep getting uh, all those two mixed up but we can do some fuzzing with a zap it's that easy it's as simple as the intruder maybe the ui is a little bit different but it's definitely not impossible. So go give it a try on hexpert.com slash labs slash burp. I know, not the correct naming entirely, but let's get over that for now. Now let's go for the big one because we also have an access control plugin installed. And with this, we can test, as the name says, access control. But the beautiful thing is we can specify like five, six, seven, eight, ten users and we can test access control all at the click of a single button once we have everything initialized. Very beautiful to set up. So let's give that a try. If we move to hexpert.com slash cheesebook for now, just hexpert.com slash cheesebook, we can see a few items. And first of all, I'm going to click around a little bit and I'm going to see if I can't generate some data. This is important because I need those URLs. So if I have a, for example, if I know that this is my highest privileged user and this is then number test, okay, I should be able to access that, but I can set that up later. Um, I'm just going to click around. I'm just gonna see that I have everything noted down. Make sure that you've clicked on everything, that you've explored everything. Normally you can just start your spider as well if you're logged in because now that I'm logged in I can start my spider from here and I can have some more items in scope very easily. Now um, as you will see where is it slash cheesebook all of these URLs are filling up right now. All fine and dandy. What was that for you might be wondering. Well now that I have all of my URLs in zap i can very easily define a new context from this so i right click it i click create me a new context there we go and that is my context number four cheesebook and in here i have an inclusion in context which is only the cheesebook url and then i can define users on here 
Now you might be wondering, okay, how do I define users? Well, first of all, you need to define how do you authenticate on here. And we saw that we can authenticate with a form based authentication. Let's look at that again, because we need that URL anyway. And this is our URL and the fields in here. The data is username and password. I can see that if I look at my identifiers of my fields, one is username and the other one was password. Uh, if that is, it's not always and those things are going to be the exact same as the parameters. I can look in my network tab and look at the specific request as well. Or I can literally just log in. I can look here and these are my parameters. Now, as you can see, username and password. So when I'm here, this URL, I'm just going to copy that. Then I'm going to go to my context for Cheesebook and I'm going to go to the authentication and set it to form based authentication. Now I have the login form and I know which parameters I need, right? Username and password, username and password. And then the username parameter is, of course, username and the password parameter is password. So that's perfect already. I don't really have to set up anything more than that. Only a couple of things that I have to do, of course, is add users now. And one of them is going to be the test user, which has username test password test. You can throw in any user you'd like in here. And I'm just going to add the one for now. And then I'm going to click OK. So all of this saves and open up my access control module. Now in here, I have to define what context I'm going to run this on. Right now, I'm going to run it on the Cheesebook context. And then when I click run, it's going to ask me what users do I want to run this as. And I can run this as the test user and the unauthenticated user. But you might be wondering, what is that actually checking right now? What is it testing? Well, we can set that up as well. Because since we have the context in here, we can see, okay, what is in context, all of these different items that are in context, and then we can give it a run through as test and unauthenticated, for example, we can start it and it's going to populate that I've set up my scope incorrectly, I've noticed. So let's go back to the uh, where is it? Good that you guys see this as well. So include from context is gone. I don't know where it went. Include from context. Just going to copy this and change it a little bit. Expert.com slash cheesebook. There we go. Add that to my context again. That is strange that we didn't have that anymore, but now we should be, if we look at the access control rules, we should be able to see those again. Perfect. Don't know where that went, but now you, know, you guys know how to troubleshoot this a little bit as well. If you don't see anything here, but your site tree is filled up, go look at your contexts. So right now, everything here is inherited. What does that mean? It means that is inherited from the item above it. Now, this user, this specific user, unauthenticated user, let's say that by default, they are denied access to everything except to the login page and to the home page. So login, allow index and register as well. There we go and nothing else. So everything by default is denied except for these items. Now my test user is the other way around. He can normally access everything, but there are certain things that he cannot do. Like this create user, he should not normally be able to do. There might be some more items in the website as well. Then it's up to me to go through the website to have a little bit of a look see what I can find. For example, if I go and log in again as my admin and username test, and then I can view users right here. So if I click that, 
then I have another item in my scope. And if I set the access control to view users.php, I should also get denied because the test user is not the admin user. He shouldn't have access to this page. Now I can run this. And when I do, if I can select my users, of course, and this is what I meant by if I add 10 users, then I can test with 10 users at the exact same time. And if it finds any violations of the things I've just defined, it's going to throw a high risk uh, notification, a high risk alert out there which is freaking amazing because it allows me to test so many things by just defining them once. I can hand this over to my project and I can say, here you go, you can keep on and keep on and keep on running this until infinity. Just reopen up this session. Uh, and by session, I mean SAP session, of course. Then click run and you're automatically testing. How cool is that? So that's it for the access control. A plugin for Zap. Thank you very much, and that's it for part one as well for the um, for the for the showcase of vulnerabilities. In part two, we'll look at some more issues with Zap on Hexpert.com, and I'll see you guys in a bit.